All right, we're back here in St. Stephen's, Catawba County. Things have settled down at the fill site. They successfully switched over to uh, the pumper supporting the uh, fill site. So the pumper's taking in water from uh, both the steamer connection and the side connection. So before they charged the hydrant the first time, they had put this gate valve on the butt, which is smart. Uh, so now they're able to take advantage of the capacity of the hydrant. So the flow rate through this setup of the dual three inch or dual two and a half lines went from 650 gallons per minute to about 1200. And again, that was simply due to the residual pressure that was available from this hydrant. Um, now that there is uh, more pressure available from this engine, it's able to overcome the friction loss in those lines. Uh, the lines are capable of handling 500 gallons per minute each. That's not the problem. They just need sufficient pressure to do that. So we did measure this this morning. Uh, even when the pumper driver is uh, has his discharge gauge set at 100 pounds, by the time it gets to the back of those tankers, it's 40 or 50, just due to the pressure loss, the friction loss in the hose setup. So not a big deal until you're trying to run it through uh, hydrant pressure only, and then it becomes a big deal. So we'll watch. Uh, that's a 1,500-gallon tanker there from Denver. I'm pretty sure it's 15. It might be 2,000, but... Uh, it's been less than uh, a minute and a half since they started filling him. You can look over his gauge and see that he's almost full. See the little green light flashing at the top. Uh, so I would bet that they're able to fill him at least a thousand gallons per minute, if not, uh, not more. So this um, engine tanker that just pulled up has a large fill port in the back, that's why they set up the LDH, and um, he's able to fill pretty quick uh, through that. So, some different stuff going on here, but the, the fellows are working hard, and I think they got it figured out.